attempts are going on in the South African province of KwaZulu-Natal to find scores of people who are missing after the worst flooding in decades. More than 300 have died after torrential rain saw buildings, roads and bridges washed away. Let's uh, go over to our correspondent Shingai Nyoka, who's in Durban. What sort of efforts are going on, Shingai, right now? Well, as you can see, the sun is out uh, and the flood waters are receding, but the relief efforts uh, are still ongoing. There are still many people uh, that are missing. We've heard uh, stories from people on the ground. They say that they're frustrated by the pace at which uh, the relief agencies are getting to the communities that are in need. And uh, by admission, the officials say that they are stretched uh, beyond their capacity. Uh, there are many uh, communities that are still cut off, uh, school children children that haven't been able to go to school, uh, people that have been displaced in community halls. And so the government says it's still moving from community to community to assess the needs. Uh, but mop-up operations have begun. Uh, they have started to restore power and water supplies in some of the affected areas. But this still is very much a state of disaster. And the government has announced that uh, recently, which allows more resources to be channeled towards this problem. We're looking at pictures of, of so much devastation, Shingai. Uh, give us a sense of the size of the area that's been so badly affected. Well, the authorities say that it is uh, the whole of KwaZulu-Natal, which is a very strategic uh, port city. It's the largest in sub-Saharan Africa, uh, servicing southern African countries uh, that are landlocked. Uh, the stories that we've been hearing are that, for example, the trucks that were coming into the province uh, to collect goods have been stuck uh, because the roads are damaged, the infrastructure is damaged, uh, the access issues, uh, the lines of about 10 kilometers long, and authorities are saying that they shouldn't come in at the moment. Now, the president, Cyril Ramaphosa, visited the area on Wednesday. What did he see and what did he promise? Well, he saw the grieving families. He saw the extent of the damage, and e of the damage, and even he was surprised. And it's a line that we've been hearing over the last couple of days: is that although the weather services had warned people to move from low-lying areas, nobody expected the ferocity uh, that we saw, the torrential rains, the four days uh, of these torrential rains, which battered this province. And uh, the president has promised uh, relief aid uh, to those that are affected. Many people have lost loved ones. Many have lost their homes in mudslides. Uh, there have some, some were homeowners and they've become homeless overnight and they're living in shelters. And the questions they're asking to government is what happens next? How long will they be able to stay at those shelters? Um, and, and what plan the government has? And this really speaks to some of the criticism that we've heard against the government that uh, while President Cyril Ramaphosa has said that this storm, uh, this disaster, was as a result of climate change. Uh, some are saying that it's drainage, some are saying that it's town planning that has placed these flimsy structures in these vulnerable areas. Shingai, thank you very much.